Okay, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for that introduction, John Fritzler. Woo! I'm very happy to be here to share this brand new teaching with you entitled Get Into the Ozone Crankshaft It. Now there's one thing that has been fascinating me more than anything else in the entire world and that is what happens exactly when an artist, uh, uh, someone who's creating something, uh, gets into that state of inspiration. And as they're creating, maybe it's a writer, maybe it's a, a composer, as he's in that state of uh, becoming deeply absorbed in that creative process, somewhere along that process, a shift occurs. And when that shift occurs, there's this greater power that takes over and then starts creating the rest of the, the masterpiece. And I was always fascinated, what exactly is that? You, as the individual, start this writing process. You're writing or you're drawing or something, or you, you have this like architectural plan, and you start working on it and working on it. And then all of a sudden, something, tr you transfer into another dimension. And then all of a sudden, the, everything else melts away. And then you are just creating this, this, this stuff just comes pouring through you. It's just like rushing through you. This, this, this other, uh, what we call this, this other intelligence just starts flowing right through you. And you start writing things that, you know, aren't really coming from you. They're coming from a different place. And I always was fascinated with that. And uh, it made me think of a, a really powerful illustration. And uh, when it's, whenever it's happened to me, um, I've always been uh, just dumbfounded when I get into that state of uh, writing or designing something, then all of a sudden this other force takes over, and then this other force just starts just flowing right through me. And so uh, the best way I could describe it is, um, is what I call crankshafting. Now right here on this photo, um, you'll see there's like this lever right here. And this lever is in front of this old car. Back in the olden days, they would crankshaft the engine. And as they would crankshaft the engine, they would have to keep turning it and turning it and turning it to uh, eventually start the engine. And then once the engine started, then the person would get into the car and start driving it. And I was thinking about that, that as an illustration, as a way to build a teaching of what we need to do in our lives. We need to start crankshafting that engine. And so um, what I want to start going into, the first area that we're going to go into as far as uh, what you need to start crankshafting is your creativity. So the creativity... What we want to do is we want to figure out um, when we get into that creative mode, uh, how often as you are getting involved in that, that, that artistic pursuit, how often does that happen to where you actually hit that, that transference and then the, the inspirational, the, the, the other universal mind takes over and starts flowing through you? And uh, that's uh, where we are going to uh, uh, relate this to a quote by one of the greatest minds and the greatest inventors human history has ever seen. His name is Nikola, uh, his name is Nikola Tesla. And Nikola Tesla, this is what he has to say about this, this, this other force or intelligence that works through us when we are in the zone. When we get into the zone. Here we go. He says, my brain is only a receiver. In the universe, there is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, inspiration. I have not penetrated into the secrets of this core, but I know it exists. Knowledge, inspiration, and strength coming from a core in the universe. 
And when we start crankshafting that creativity, when we really start like turning those creative wheels, those gears in our head, what happens is, is that engine starts and it ignites. And as soon as that engine ignites and starts running, this core, the core in this universe, contained in this universe, pours into us knowledge, strength, and inspiration. Isn't that unbelievable? So this is what I want you to do. I want you to see your creativity as like a gear that you, have, that you are crankshafting. And as you look at this gear, I want, to, I want you to go through all of the activity that you are pursuing and you're intensely involved with, the, the activity uh, that, that gets this, this creativity going, gets this gear going. And as we get this gear going, you're gonna hit the zone. And that's what we want to get you into, that creative zone is what, what I would like to call getting you into the ozone. So the ozone is when you, when you get into that space of having that inspiration flow through you, uh, what happens is, is you start, uh, you, you become amazed of what is actually happening. You actually become uh, dumbfounded that this energy is like creating this, these powerful works that you're, that you're uh, transcribing. And so it makes you just say just, oh my, or oh wow, or oh my God, you can't believe it. You're, you're surprising yourself. That's the state that I want you to get into. That's what crankshafting your creativity is all about. So on a scale of zero to 10, I want you to put how powerful are you crankshafting your creativity. Then we're going to go on to the next one, your passion. Your passion. How are you crankshafting your passion to get these gears flowing and going so that you can pop into the ozone? So passion. Now with passion, uh, what we want to do is just we want to start uh, understanding the inner self with uh, the talents, the gifts that you have, uh, your untapped potential, and the way that is moving right along with what you are doing on your daily life. So um, if you're in a profession that is actually feeding your passion, that's great. If you're in a, if you're in a job where you just have to like pay bills to you know work that job to pay your bills, if you're in that position, what you want to do is you want to create something off onto the side and you want to start pursuing your passion as you are uh, working your job. You want to run those along the two. And so that's, the most, that's one of the most important things to do with your passion. You want to know your passion. You want to be clear on what exactly your passion is and you need to start pursuing it. And pursuing it means you have to start crankshafting it. You have to start winding up those gears. You have to start turning those gears of that passion to where that engine ignites and starts running. And as soon as you uh, create that, that power of passion in your life, that's going to pop you into the ozone. That's where you're going to just start, you know, having this, this energy about you, you're, you're carrying yourself among your, your, your social circles, your workmates, uh, they can sense that you're a passionate person. It's like, wow, that guy's really passionate about life. He's passionate about um, you know, his creativity. He's passionate about uh, helping people. And that's, that's one of the most important things that uh, passion needs to be projected out of your personality. So on a zero to 10, have you been crank shafting your passion? Next, power. Power. Now, crank shafting your power is we have to recognize all of the powers that we have within us and we have to start creating that gear. We have to start moving that gear. So we have mental power, physical power, 
emotional power, spiritual power? Are we crankshafting that power? Are we turning those gears? Are we you know, actively involved? Are we in that intense pursuit of penetrating our intellect and our powers into this world? Crankshaft that power. So what is that number between zero to 10? Are you crankshafting that power to get yourself into the ozone? You know, uh, as an athlete, as an athlete, getting into the zone is one of the most uh, extraordinary experiences I have ever experienced as a former professional athlete. Um, I want to relate to you a little story. Uh, this is uh, one of my signing cards uh, back when I was a pro surfer. And uh, this is a, a little clip from a newspaper article uh, written by Gary Taylor. He was one of my best friends. He, he passed away uh, several years ago. And uh, he, wrote a, he wrote in a newspaper column. And uh, we had this amazing surf session out at Swami's on this particular afternoon. And he put it in the newspaper. And I want to relay this uh, story to you uh, so that you can start really learning how to crankshaft that power in your life to get you into the ozone. So here's the story, here we go. I remember one particular Saturday afternoon, crowded to capacity as, as always, but on that day, Seth Elmer achieved the impossible. He was the hands down, no argument standout among 50 or 60 surfers. I admit at the time, watching Seth somehow catch the best wave of every set on this epic six foot day, pulling into barrel after barrel and right in front of me, I was envious, maybe even a little pissed. Okay, yeah, I was pissed, but later I realized I was witnessing a special moment in time when an incredibly gifted surfer was experiencing the best session of his life. He told me this a few weeks afterwards on some of the best surfing waves on the planet on that given day. Now Seth is an aggressive surfer. He will get his uh, more than his fair share of waves in his, if a situation warrants. But even he was blown away by the singular display of surfing genius, pulling into yet another loping stand up top to bottom back door barrel coming through the inside. Seth had this huge smile on his face and flashed us peons on the shoulder a double peace sign not unlike Michael Jordan's famous shrug to the world during a playoff game that said, I am in a zone and have no explanation for it. So that experience, imagine the most, the biggest, best waves of, of the entire winter and there's like 70 people out. All of the odds are against you that you're not gonna be catching a, a, a lot of waves. But on this particular day on this particular session, getting into the zone, you find this magic place. So like even though there's like hundreds of people out, every time I paddled out, back out, there was just a perfect wave coming right for me and I was just having just the best session of my entire life. And no matter what was happening for about an hour and a half, it just stayed that way the entire time. And that's what getting in the ozone, getting in the zone is all about. Uh, athletes, um, when, when they, uh, like with runners, they'll all of a sudden, they're running, 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 and then they, they hit a runner's high. And they're, and they're just. So that's what crankshafting is all about. So really think about your life. If you're an athlete, uh, if you're in business, uh, if you're uh, an artist, you know, really think about crank shafting it to the point where you have that amazing thrilling experience of getting into the ozone to where you're saying oh my oh wow oh my god that's where you got to go that's where you got to start cranking your power crank shafting your power to get into the ozone now the last one we're going to say the very last is love the love of the love in your life crankshafting the love now uh, in relationships uh, 
men and women are speaking uh, two different languages. Uh, predominantly, women are speaking the language of love, and men are predominantly speaking the language of logic. So to start really crankshafting the love in your life, uh, it's very important that um, we understand how to speak uh, uh, clearly those different languages toward, towards each other. So we have to really open up the heart and make that connection. That we need to speak, we need to start crankshafting the love, crankshafting the heart. So right here in this area, what could I possibly do to start crankshafting my love, my love life? What do I have to start opening up in my heart? I'm going to share with you a, a poem. And uh, this poem is uh, from a little book that I wrote. It's a little self-published book. And it's got a collection of all of my poems in here. And if you're out there and you really want to start crankshafting the love in your life, and uh, you, maybe you might want to read this or recite it to the one that you love so that you can really start getting into the ozone with your love life. Uh, this poem is entitled, My Eyes Love You. It's hard to believe what my eyes tell me in the three dimensions of your beauty. In every single angle all around, in every thought of you I think of, my eyes see an angel floating down from the heavenly clouds above. Whenever I look around the earth and up into all of the stars, it's truly amazing how beautiful you are. You are more special than all of them combined. My eyes don't lie when they see this truth shine. It all becomes true whenever I look at you. Whenever they gaze upon you, they tell me the shiny truth. My eyes love you. They love your every move and all the things that you do. The immeasurable magnitude of your beauty will always shine through. Forever, my eyes love you. Crankshaft the love in your life. Really speak that language of love to the one that you love. We're going to finish off with a quote. And uh, this quote is going to be at the very bottom here. It's going to say, for all of you out there, the moment that you realize that this is not about you will be the time when the divine shines through. We have this core out in the universe waiting for us to get into the ozone so that the, div the divine can shine through. The mind is a machine. Crankshaft it. The body is a machine. Crankshaft it. My reality is a machine. Crankshaft it. My passion is a machine. Crankshaft it. My power is a machine. Crankshaft it. My creativity is a machine. Crankshaft it. My love is a machine. Crankshaft it. Get into the ozone. Crankshaft it.